The 2024 NFL Draft is full of talented edge rushers, considered one of the most important positions in the NFL. These guys could certainly go relatively high in this draft. Today we're going to be diving into my top 10 right now, still certainly subject to change, but let's dive into it starting with number 10. That's going to be Gabriel Murphy out of UCLA. We will talk about another UCLA pass rusher certainly later on today, but Murphy is a really interesting one. He is a junior, a redshirt junior, six foot three, two hundred and sixty pounds, at eight sacks and sixteen tackle for loss. One thing about Murphy that was relatively interesting, he did play a lot of kind of interior. Certainly doesn't have the build to play that three tech role necessarily, but he definitely did play it a decent bit in kind of UCLA's multiple type front. Murphy's an interesting one. He doesn't necessarily have the most prolific athleticism. I don't think he's the biggest guy. He is a little bit stubby, I think. He doesn't have the longest arms, doesn't have that length advantage that you look for in the edge rush position. I do think that he is pretty effective when using his hands. He can disengage from blocks relatively effectively. He does have a couple of nice pass rush moves. I think he can continue to develop you know, a further array of different ones, but he does have some pass rush moves. He can attack the outside shoulder a little bit. He can get some decent run power. He's kind of an unspectacular prospect, somebody that doesn't necessarily really stand out in one trade. I'd say that his hand usage is probably his best trait and the, the thing he does most effectively, but I really don't think there's one thing where he kind of has that trump card that really makes him a dominant player in the NFL. I have a third to a fourth round grade I think he'll be a really solid rotational type of defensive end you put him in as your you know third edge rusher maybe get him in the interior every once in a while on obvious pass rushing downs I definitely think he can be effective in that role just not super super excited I do think that there's really a couple of guys that could have made it into this 10 spot but we're gonna go with Gabriel Murphy out of UCLA moving to number nine I have Adisa Isaac out of Penn State he also will have, you know, a teammate further up on this list. He's a senior, 6'4", 249 pounds. I really like a lot of the athletic traits that Isaac has. And, you know, I do think that he could get pushed up this board a little bit more, especially if he has a really strong combine. I definitely think that could play a part. I do think that some of the athletic testing is rather important for some of these edge rushers. I like his kind of size and speed profile. He isn't necessarily the heaviest defensive end by any means at 249 pounds, but he has a decent speed to power. He can kind of get that power rush. I think he has relatively long arms. He's pretty effective in using those arms to disengage from locks. I really like his intangibles, his understanding of where to play the run, when he's really going to get after the passer. He can attack the outside shoulder. I definitely think he has all of the athletic tools that you really look for to be a really solid number two pass rusher the issue is is right now he just doesn't necessarily have a very vast range of pass rush moves right now he mostly just attacks the outside shoulder tries to run around and win with athleticism or use that speed to try to convert it into power on a bull rush he doesn't necessarily have the most effective swipe moves or arm over moves he just doesn't try a lot of that for somebody who is a senior you would hope to see a little bit more there you definitely think that you can maybe mold him into a type of play where you know the athletic traits can't be taught and maybe a coach convinces themselves that you can teach them the pass rush moves so I definitely think that he is kind of a little bit of that ball of clay type of prospect and I have a second to a third round grade on him I definitely think he can be an effective player maybe develop into a solid number two he had seven and a half sacks and 16 tackle for loss and 81.7 PFF grade so definitely has some decent numbers to go along with that athleticism it's just about being a little bit more consistent and developing some of those advanced techniques as a pass rusher at number eight next we have jonah ellis out of utah he's an interesting player he's really small six foot two 246 pounds he just completely lacks that desired length that you would look for he does not have long arms he's not particularly big and effective in the run game so i definitely think that plays a major part in his scouting report he is probably not ever going to be able to be a three down player. He's probably going to be a pass rush specialist. He's going to be somebody that comes in on third and long, obvious passing situations and allows you to kind of get that extra jolt to get after the passer. But I think he's really, really good at that. He had 12 sacks, 16 tackle for loss and 84.8 PFF grade in 2023. And he has a wide range of different pass rush moves that he can go to. I thought he used his hands very effectively. He understands how to attack 
you know, offensive linemen, how to set them up and counter them. I really liked some of the smarts that he has. If you paired, you know, Disa Isaac up with Jonah Ellis, you get Isaac's body and then the smarts and understanding of how to play the position with Jonah Ellis, you would have an amazing type player. It's just a little bit more of the situational type thing for both of these guys. I think Ellis is going to be a special type of player that you have to know what role you're drafting him for. But as a designated pass rusher, he can absolutely be a really nice piece, get you a couple of sacks, be an effective pressure machine on those longer downs and distances. I have a second to a third round grade on him. I do think that he is going to be a very effective player in that role. It's just a little bit of a limited role. I just like a lot of the things that he does, though. He can attack the outside shoulder, bend around, make plays. He had the production, so I definitely am a fan of Jonah Ellis. You just have to know what you're getting with him in that specific niche role. At number seven up next, we have Darius Robinson out of Missouri. Somebody I was very pleasantly surprised with. He is huge, 6'5", 296 pounds, has an absolutely giant wingspan. You know, definitely has the long arms, length, size that you look for in that position, no doubt about it, which makes him a really effective run defender as well. He can set the edge effectively. He can also penetrate into the backfield and be a new since for those offensive linemen plug up the running gaps and definitely a very very important edge defender for Missouri this past year he also has decent athleticism I would say he is a little bit stiff doesn't necessarily have the best bend around the outside shoulder and the ability to kind of attack and really be a true guy that threatens the speed of the offensive tackle but he did win on the outside shoulder a couple of times. He also has an effective long arm. He can go to an arm over. He doesn't have the most vast range of pass rush moves, but the ones he does have are relatively effective. And just that sheer size and length and understanding of kind of how to attack offensive linemen, I definitely think that makes him a very high floor type of player and potentially a high ceiling player as well. I have a second to a third round grade on him, but I really like a lot of the traits. He's definitely somebody that I would take a shot on sometime in day two. He has good intangibles. You know, if you can kind of get the best out of him, he definitely could turn into a steal for one of these NFL teams on day two. Really, really like a lot of the things that Robinson did. Eight and a half sacks, 14 tackle for loss, and 83.0 PFF grade. I definitely think that he could be a productive player and somebody that you could plug in on early downs and have a lot of success and then maybe bring in a designated pass rusher as he continues to learn the ropes in that regard in the NFL. At number six, I have Braylon Trice out of Washington. Maybe a little bit lower on Braylon Trice than some people. I have a true second round grade on him. He was very productive, had an 87.4 PFF grade, seven sacks, 11 and a half tackle for loss, but he was getting constant pressures all year. Wasn't able to turn them necessarily into the most consistent you know, numbers production, but he was absolutely getting after the quarterback. I think he's really well built, 6'4", 274 pounds. He certainly can be a nuisance for the offense in the running game. I think that's potentially one of his strongest traits is just his ability to hold the outside edge, throw that guy off. You can kind of two gap, both hold the inside shoulder as well as preventing him from bouncing it outside. I definitely think he's really effective in that regard. He has that good size and power combination. And that means that he can use his speed to power really effective to be a good power bull rush player. He has powerful hands and can certainly strike into the chest of the offensive lineman really, really effectively. I just think that his ability to attack the outside shoulder is really limiting. I thought it was limiting in college, and it's only going to get worse in the NFL. I just think he's really stiff. He doesn't have a lot of bend to that outside shoulder. I just think it makes him a little bit one-dimensional in his ability to attack the offensive line. I really don't think he can win effectively or very often to the outside shoulder against NFL caliber athletes at offensive tackle. So that means he's either going to have to go through you or do some kind of inside counter. He has some pass rush moves. He has some counters, but it's not going to, I think, really allow him to be a number one edge rusher in the NFL just due to that pure lack of athleticism. I think you're getting a really solid number two rusher, somebody that can be really effective on early downs, can give you, you know, maybe six sacks once he really kind of comes into his own as a pass rusher, but I just don't think he's going to be that double digit sack guy that's bending around the edge, forcing the quarterback to step up and really being dangerous at kind of all the facets that you would want your edge rushers to be. 
I just think he lacks a little bit of that flexibility and bend to really allow him to be that elite type of edge prospect. Definitely think he still has value. Definitely think he's still a productive and effective player. Just not quite as high. I, I wouldn't necessarily want to take him in round one. At number five, we have Chris Braswell out of Alabama. Definitely a very fun player to watch. He's a senior, 6'3", 255 pounds, had an 81.0 PFF grade, eight sacks, 10 and a half tackle for loss. He is definitely full of athleticism, and that's certainly something that you love to see. He wins really effectively to that outside shoulder. He kind of has some nice pass rush moves. He goes to a Euro step, kind of outside uh, attack of that shoulder. He can win with a long arm. He has the power and kind of size and speed to really be effective on a bull rush when he can get going. I do think he lacks some effective counters when he kind of gets held up by a lineman. He doesn't disengage very effectively or kind of move into a secondary move very quickly. I just think that that does limit his ability once he does get kind of beat initially. He doesn't really do a good job of recovering and still working through the quarterback. I think he is pretty good at using his hands. He's a solid run defender for his size. He's not necessarily you know, setting the edge like Braylon Trice, but he can definitely penetrate in the backfield. He can hold up on tight ends and be an effective run stuffer. He's not going to you know, be a lead in that category, but I definitely think he's not going to be a complete liability as well. I think he's kind of got a lot of that, you know, mold him into a really, really good player. I think he's a solid edge two to start and then you could potentially develop him into an edge one i think he is a first to a second round grade for me an 84.35 i definitely think that he in the right situation could be an awesome fit i've seen you know a lot of mock drafts where he potentially ends up on somebody like the raven somebody towards the end of round one i think that would be a really good landing spot for him where he can kind of sit back learn how to develop a little bit further when it comes to his counters and his efficiency and shedding blocks after he gets held up. But if he can do that, I definitely think he can turn into a really, really nice pass rusher for a team in late round one or early round two. At number four, we have Chop Robinson, Adisa Isaac's teammate at Penn State. And Chop Robinson is potentially one of the most kind of intriguing, but also I'd say controversial edge prospects in this draft because the production wasn't necessarily there. Only had four sacks, seven and a half tackle for loss. He had a really good PFF grade at 90.8, but he wasn't really effective at getting the quarterback to the ground very often. He also is very one-dimensional. He's not really much of a run defender. He doesn't do a great job at setting the edge or penetrating into the backfield. I think he would get blown off the ball by most NFL tackles at this point. He doesn't necessarily have the size and, I don't know, maybe desire to really be effective in that running game. He's not completely a liability, but I wouldn't say it's a strong suit of his either. He just doesn't have the longest arms. I don't think that... You know, that allows him to disengage from blocks super effectively in the running game. But what makes him truly special, unlike somebody like Braylon Trice, he has a rare ability to get off the snap and just blow past the tackle on the outside shoulder and just out athlete guys and just smash into the quarterback. He is so effective at just timing the snap perfectly and using his insane athletic traits to bend around that edge and attack the outside shoulder. I definitely think he needs to continue to add pass rush moves. He needs to continue to add counters because when he gets stonewalled, he really doesn't get past the offensive lineman very effectively. But he has a truly rare ability to jump off the snap and bend around that outside edge that just makes him so intriguing. I think he's going to have an amazing 10 yard split, really, really good athletic numbers at the combine. And I think that's going to push him back up towards where a lot of people originally had him as a you know first round pick. I have a first to a second round grade on him. I am a little bit concerned that he is a bit of a one trick pony and just the ability to out athlete guys. And you know they get a lot more athletic at the NFL. If he's not able to do that, he's probably not going to be an effective player at all. But that is just a rare trait that you know is very hard to come by, and it's really one of the most important traits to attack that outside shoulder and really have that offensive tackle kind of on skates because then he overextends. You can do an inside counter. You can really attack the pocket and force the quarterback to step up into the other guys in the rush. So 
definitely a unique player, a rare athlete, but he is a little bit one-dimensional right now. So I'll be very interested to see where Chop Robinson goes and what you guys think in the comments of where he should go as well. Up next, I think these top three are clearly kind of in a tier of their own for me personally. I'll have true first round grades on all of them. First up, we have Jared Verse at number three. Verse is somebody that has an incredibly interesting story. Went to Albany, the Great Danes, and then transferred to Florida State. Was draft eligible and potentially a top 10, maybe even top five pick last year. Decided to come back to Florida State. I don't think he necessarily hurt his stock too much, but I don't think he really helped it much at all either. So, you know, interesting there, but he's 6'4", 260 pounds. He put on some good weight, I think. He has incredibly powerful hands. He's long, he's athletic, and that those hands just strike those offensive linemen so hard, and it really allows Verse to kind of control the dynamic of the play. I think that he is really good when it comes to pass rush moves. He has some really effective ones. He can go to a bull rush. He can go to an arm over, a chop to attack the outside shoulder. He definitely isn't the bendiest player in the world. He's not going to scream around the edge like Chop Robinson does, but he can win the outside shoulder. It's usually with effective pass rush moves and setting up the offensive linemen to really kind of get them to overcommit to the inside move or the bull rush. He definitely has great speed to power. He can threaten and run up and just smash that offensive lineman in the chest, drive him back, and you know, you know we can certainly see evidence of that when he just crushes the offensive lineman back into his quarterback. I definitely think that Verse is a very good player. I think he can be an edge one, certainly in the NFL. He's kind of that really good run defender. He's good when it comes to power rushes. He's a polished, clean prospect. I think he has just an incredibly high floor. I don't think he's necessarily got the same ridiculous ceiling as some of these other athletes and some of the more polished guys in this class, but I really do think that Verse is just a really, really good you know, I think he'll come into the NFL and be pretty good from day one, potentially kind of a rookie of the year type candidate because I think he's going to come in and be effective while some of these other guys may take some time to really get after it. I think if first goes to the right situation, he could absolutely be in that conversation. I definitely think he's a really good player, a solid first round grade, a 91.30 for him. And after a really good year, nine sacks, 12 and a half for loss, an 84.9 PFF grade, certainly think it is well-deserved. At number two, we have Dallas Turner out of Alabama. This guy is just a supercharged, ridiculous athlete. He's 6'4", 252 pounds, had an 81.6 PFF grade, 10 sacks, 14 tackle for loss. I have a 91.74 grade on him. Again, a true first round grade. This guy, his speed to power, his bend, his athleticism, his ability to attack that outside shoulder are all rare. He is a genuinely special athlete at the edge rusher position. I think by far the best athlete on this list. And you know maybe that we've seen since somebody like Miles Garrett. I definitely think he's way more explosive than Will Anderson last year. He is just supercharged at that edge rusher position. That allows him to win the outside shoulder. He can certainly bend around. He can be effective. No doubt about it. That part is you know, something that he can do within his game. But it also allows him to really generate a lot of that build-up speed. And he can be an effective power rusher as well. I was a little bit surprised at 252 pounds how much power he was able to generate. And I think it's because of good hand placement, but also that build-up speed and his ability to just convert that into power and get into the offensive lineman's chest. He is a little bit less developed than somebody like Jared Verse when it comes to his run defense. He is good at it. He can set the edge. He can penetrate into the backfield, but he's not on the same level of somebody like Verse who just controls his offensive lineman so effectively. He's also not necessarily got the huge bag of pass rush moves. He definitely is really good when it comes to that, but I think that you know, he kind of has his go-to moves. It's mostly going to be out-athleting guys. He does have some moves in there. He can certainly do an arm over. He can win with a bull rush. He's shown swim moves, things like that. But I do think that he is the best athlete on the list, and he has the highest potential on the list because of that. There is just a little bit more development that could truly make him special if he is able to kind of reach all of those athletic traits and match him with a lot of the technique that he is good at but still can continue to even get better at I think Dallas Turner could absolutely be a special special player at number one we have Alayatu Latu out of UCLA he's 6'5 265 pounds he's a senior 
And there's a couple of big red flags when it comes to Latu, no doubt about it. The first one, he's 23 years old. He definitely is not the best athlete on this list. I would say he's a solid 7 out of 10 athlete, but he's nothing special when it comes to just his rare burst like somebody like Dallas Turner. And then the biggest red flag, he had to medically retire from Washington. They would not clear him to practice. They wouldn't clear him to, you know, be a player on their roster. He had to medically retire before UCLA. You know, he transferred there and they were able to grant him eligibility and he was able to play. Now, if there are concerns about that, I definitely think Latu could fall in this draft. I don't have the medical, so I'm just going purely based on, you know, some of the traits and some of the things I saw on film. And Latu is by far not even close, the most polished guy in this class. His rare ability to just go to a variety of different pass rush moves, a variety of different counters, it's so impressive. He also is really pretty long as well. He's really good at block shedding. I think he's a really underrated run defender. He's definitely good at setting the edge, shedding blocks, penetrating into the backfield, making effective plays. And then he also has the elite production that you look for as well. He had 13 sacks and 21 and a half tackle for loss last year. He had 96.2 PFF grade. That was the number one edge rusher in the entire country. I mean, this guy is special when it comes to the technique of the position. Like I said, he doesn't have that rare athleticism that, you know, if he had that, he would be somebody that would be considered a Miles Garrett, a Nick Bosa, something like that. And he's not that type of player. He's not that type of athlete. But when it comes to the pure technique of the position, I definitely think he's one of the more polished guys that we've seen come out in the past couple of years. I do have a top 10 grade on him, a 93.48. I like I said, would understand if he slips because of the medicals, because of the age concerns. Some of that stuff, we just don't know. But based on pure film grade, this guy is a special talent, somebody I would feel comfortable taking in the top 10 and definitely going to end up as my number one edge rusher in the 2024 NFL draft. Let me know your thoughts down below. Who do you want your favorite team to take? What is your top 10? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like NFL and NFL draft content just like this, please hit that subscribe button down below. While you're down there, hit the like button as well. It just helps push this video out to other NFL draft fans just like you so I can continue to make videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.